The text that the worship team read earlier from Isaiah 6 is, I'll let you in on a little secret, many preachers' favorite text because it's inspiring, it's beautiful, it's awe-inspiring, it is a truly useful word, use of the word awesome, and most preachers know that what we do is a dangerous game. We are people with unclean lips speaking to impure people. No offense. And uh, we need this purification. So when the seraphim comes and he burns Isaiah's lips with the hot coal of God, there's this kind of resonance. Yeah, it's hard. It should be hard. Most important things are hard. But when God asks the question, Isaiah answers, right. Who shall we send? Isaiah says, here I am. Send me. And usually this is when preachers stop focusing on Isaiah 6 because what happens next is not God saying to Isaiah, you are going to be so successful in your preaching. You are going to speak and people are going to love it. They are just going to think everything you say is so smart and funny. Oh, Isaiah, you're going to be really popular. No. God says you're going to speak and people are going to learn less. You're going to will them to turn back to God, and the harder you work, the harder they'll turn away. Your campaign, your prophecy, your career will be unsuccessful. It will fail. And the more you are faithful to it, the less successful it will be. And here is where I really identify with Isaiah. Because first, he's, he's, he's really bold, and he says, Here I am, Lord, send me, and I need to be purified. And then he says, Till when? How long am I going to have to keep saying this message of futility? And God says... Till Jerusalem is destroyed. Till not a single person is living in a household of Jerusalem anymore. You are going to preach this message until the dream of Jerusalem is dead. But um, if Jerusalem is like a mighty oak tree, I'm going to cut it down. But out of that stump, something's going to grow. The seed of life is going to grow out of that stump. And um, here at the table, here at the table that Jesus hosts, he gives his followers a pretty similar message. They are coming to Jerusalem with Jesus excited because they believe that he is the one long prophesied about who will come and restore Jerusalem from its destruction. This Jesus is going to come and drive out the Romans who just like the Syrians before them, just like the Babylonians before them, have destroyed our people. Jesus is going to make it right. And Jesus says, um, that's not quite how the next couple of days are going to go. <laughs> Even some of his followers have arguments about which one of them will be installed as like the secretary of state and the secretary of the interior in the new Jerusalem. And Jesus says, oh, you're not going to be able to participate in what I'm about to do. 
you can't be baptized with the baptism that I am about to experience. It would wreck you. Jesus tells his followers that this table and what will proceed after it is not the end of their suffering, but the beginning of the end of their dreams. Jerusalem will not be restored like they thought it would. They will not be strong and powerful like they thought they would. They were not in on the ground floor of the new government of Jerusalem. They would be, oh, as Jesus said earlier, forced to find their own crosses and to pick those up and to carry them every day. When Jesus brings his followers to this table, it is much like the message that God gives Isaiah. Their lives will be unsuccessful. Their dreams will be put to death. Everything that they thought they were building their life towards will come to a ruin if they are faithful. Out of the destroyed city is a stump. And out of a tomb walks a man that was once dead. And out of the rubble of our dreams, a new life grows. This table is the death of who we thought we were. But on the other side of it, is a life we would have never imagined. And a goodness of life. And a hope of eternal life. And a hope of goodness here and now. Not just goodness that we thought we wanted, but a goodness we could have never dreamed possible. This is what you are invited to at this table. This is the cost of discipleship. Jesus calls you to come and die. And out of that death, a life you never could have imagined. Church, this is the body of Jesus broken for you. Take and eat. Church, this is the blood of Jesus poured out for you. Take and drink. Most holy and merciful God, we are humbled as Isaiah to be in your presence. Your dreams are not our dreams. Your future is not what we have imagined. But we will be faithful. And we will say yes to a life that looks completely unsuccessful for your glory. Because we believe in the life that you have for us after the destruction of what we had hoped for. It's through Christ's holy and wonderful name we pray. Amen.